So we do the Late Kick Extra podcast. Uh, that drops every Wednesday. And Chris hit me with something, and I answered this on the podcast, but as is usually the case, about the time I hit stop record, I think to myself, I probably should have gone a little deeper. And on this question, I feel like I should have gone deeper. This is about Ohio State. I'm going to read you. It's a, it's a little bit lengthy, um, but it's about a paragraph. I'm going to read you what Chris sent me. You tell me what you think. I'll tell you what I think. He says, Ohio State every year is mentioned as one of the big dogs in college football, year in, year out. It's interesting to me, though, that they've only won two national titles in the last 20 years. With the way they recruit, the way they develop talent, as evident by the NFL draft, is it time to dig in and maybe talk about how underachieving they've been? I get that winning a title's hard, but with everything from recruiting to NFL guys they've developed, I don't think it's unfair to expect more than two in 20 years, especially when this is a program that for the majority of the time is talked about every year as being a playoff team and a national contender. All right. It's not the first time I've ever heard that. So let me give you my take. Nick Saban has ruined college football for a lot of people. Alabama's ruined college football for a lot of people. Here's how I know. Pretend like Alabama didn't exist for a second. Would anyone think that way? Would anyone be suggesting to you that only two titles in the last 20 years is underachievement if Nick Saban wasn't at Alabama? If they just, let's just drop him from the face of the earth, an average um, eight-win program per year exists where they right now exist. If you didn't have that standard, if you didn't have that example, and I know you do, but if you didn't, if you just removed one thing, changed one thing about the sport, this wouldn't be considered underachievement. One title per decade? Look historically. How many programs have pulled that off on average? You're averaging one title a decade. Historically, you're doing better than like 98% of the sport is. But we do have that example at Alabama, and so that is what everyone is held to right now. You average one title per decade, though. For me, I'll take it. Here's what I care about, though. There is a lot of skill involved in winning a national championship. There's also a little bit of luck involved in winning a national championship. But there's just a lot of skill involved in being a contender every year. You got to get a little bit of luck go your way, the bob play, the bounce of ball play. You got to have some things go your way. But the real skill is having yourself in position every year. Just put yourself within striking distance every year, and it'll happen. It won't happen every year. The stuff Alabama does is not normal. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Put yourself in striking distance every year. So here's what I did. I said, let me go back. 2002, that's where I want to go back. That was their national championship. They won over Miami. Um, I want to read you where they finished in the national rankings each year, starting in 2002, ending in 2019. Here's where they finished. And we're asking, by the way, how many years have they been in contention? How many years has it been within their grasp? How many years have they put themselves in position? Here's where they finished. Number one, number four, number 20, number four, number two, number five, number nine, number five, number five, unranked. Three, 12, one, four, six, five, three, three. That's insane. That is insane. That's getting it done. That is getting it done, and that's putting yourself in position. They've won several conference championships. They've won Rose Bowls. College football is a sport of streaks. This is at least how I think about it. Clemson's on one right now. Bama's been on one, like I said, the likes of which you're not supposed to be able to do for over a decade. But Clemson's a good example right now. Clemson did all the right things. They recruited the right way, and they got the right quarterback, and it doesn't hurt them that they're in a, a very soft division and very soft conference, but still, they get it done when it's playoff time too. But it's a game of streaks. This is a sport of streaks. Streaks require an elite head coach, an elite quarterback usually, and an elite roster. Well, they've got all those boxes checked, and they have for a while. They've had all those boxes checked at Ohio State, which puts you in prime position to rattle off one. To, to put up two titles, and you're talking about two titles in 20 years? Ohio State's in a position right now where if they won the next three national championships, that wouldn't be shocking. They, they're great at quarterback now. They're going to be great with the next guy they got coming in. And if the next guy doesn't work out, they'll take one on the transfer market and they'll be good. So they could double their output of national titles over the span of like 24 months for all we know. They're in position and they've been in position. So no. No, I don't think in the least Ohio State is overrated, and I don't think in the least they've underachieved. Now, 
The funny part is I'll even get some pushback from some of my Buckeye viewers on that, but that's only because you have insanely high standards and expectations for your program, and I don't mind that, okay? I'm almost excluding Ohio State folks from this conversation. You're emotionally invested in your program. Um, Chris, I don't know who you pull for. I don't think you told me, but let's just say you're an Arizona State fan and you're just kind of watching from a distance. Uh, if you're sitting there saying, eh, Ohio State, you know, a little bit overrated. No, no. That's, that's a great program. And they've been, it's one thing to have a five-year run of greatness and then you sink back into mediocrity. They've been great for two decades. They're not going anywhere.